sound better? Yeah. Why don't you turn tight, Trey? The monument there is where Neil Armstrong landed back in 1969. James Olsen is a space hero in the year 2021, describing the American moon landing as fact. And those lines occur in Moon Zero Two, a film now being made in Britain. Hammer films describe it as a space western because they regard the moon as a new and exciting frontier. The hydroponics laboratory. Plants that process oxygen. And when they die, we eat them. There's nothing like it anywhere else. It's funny to think that with no air out there, nobody can just open up a window or stroll about. The rain on their faces. Elstree Studios, just outside London, have been converted to reveal aspects of moon life in the 21st century. Some real and some imaginary. Roy Ward Baker directs a cabaret scene in a 21st century hotel called the Moon Hilton. And as it's a space western, the dancing girls, the Gojos, who've gone to the moon for the summer season, have become 21st century cowboys and Indians in a very 20th century dance routine. Katharina Von Schell plays the heroine, a new arrival on the moon. And Bernard Breslau is a moon-type member of the establishment. Of course, a film like this, which is one I've always particularly wanted to be in, presents special problems because we're in the 21st century and one's got to assume that man's outlook and man's mind has also changed along with his physical surroundings in the 21st century. So you can't quite play it as you would... Um, a picture set in the 20th century. You've got to make an assumption about how people react to each other and uh, rub off each other in the 21st century. So that sets a sort of problem. The producer of Moon Zero Two is Michael Carreras. Another of the everyday difficulties which we've encountered is getting the sound out of our actors, uh, which we overcome by putting microphones in the spaces. But before they can actually speak, you have to provide them with air and to keep them cool, and to do this we've provided them with an air-cooling suit which they wear underneath, and air which circulates through the helmet. Now with your helmet on, you'll be all right. Airtight and properly warmed up. Microphone slip. Air supply. Are you sure these suits work? Sure, I'm sure. In terms of authenticity and accuracy in the set from the background to the picture, we've had to be very careful to get it uh, approximately right. What we haven't done, of course, is allow it in any way to interfere with the foreground action or the story itself. When it came to researching on the moon's surface, um, we found that there is, it's, it's really rather like pumice stone in, in a general term. Uh, a lot of this is therefore hollow, and we've made part of our set as being existing hollows within the uh, pumice stone rock, because to bring the machinery up to uh, build stuff into the surface would be terribly expensive. So our sets are based on some of them being sort of natural caverns, and the remainder of it are, it's a sort of format of a dome, something that can easily be slotted together for the uh, problems of having to bring it all the way up from Earth. And the bulk that would be involved if you had, like in modern day building materials, you had to have everything that was put onto sponsions, etc. So everything fits together like a very clever jigsaw puzzle. And the distance again and the cost of this we illustrate uh, in a small joke in the, in the bar in the Moon Hilton when one of the characters uh, is offered a scotch. He says he can't afford it because it's $36 a shot for the reason that we're a long way from Scotland. Outside the windows of the Moon Hilton, we have a panorama of Moon City, which is quite a small city, but it has its plants for creating atmosphere 
so that they can exist with inside the building, because on the moon's surface itself there's no atmosphere at all. designed the set. This is a general view of the spaceport, as seen from the customs hall. And this is the um, liner arriving from Earth, where the passengers come down this tube, and along that tube, along to the mono monorail, it takes them off to the space city. From the photographs from the Apollo space mission, we had a feeling that the moon was a green tinge, and we adapted this to our design. Well, you must remember that uh, the length of night and day on the moon is 14 times as long as ours. You have a cycle of 14 days and then 14 nights. We have a sequence in the film which takes place on the far side when the hero and heroine go off in our moon bug, which we call Moon Fargo Express because of the similarities between the Western, which we're trying to bring in. And they have this sequence on the far side, which ends with them running into the day sequence. And part of the story, again, is the tremendous change in temperature between above boiling point and well, well, well below freezing. Another part of the uh, story is that the richest and meanest man in the world, who's played by Warren Mitchell, has come up because his astronomical division has discovered uh, an asteroid which is flying in an orbit around the moon, which is made of pure sapphire. And the reason that he wants this, for as far as our plot is concerned, is that sapphire, being tremendously heat resistant, is the ideal material to use to line rocket motors for the very long journeys, not the Earth to the Moon, but from the Moon to Mars and Venus and beyond. Inside the buildings themselves, we've created uh, a very simple apparatus, uh, a switch which says artificial gravity now working. And uh, the reason for this is that we don't have to go through all the action of the film in slow motion. Um, following this up, we have invented a couple of sequences which would be much more fun if the gravity wasn't working. So we get the actor to turn it off and then we do go into a slow motion flight sequence. And the reason that we've really gone for the comedy angle here is because it's the most wonderful thing in the world to hit a man and then see him go very slowly sailing across through the dancing girls and crashing into part of the decoration. Uh, this set we're in now is the control cabin of the uh, Moon Zero Two, which is the title of the picture. and the. Uh, Moon Zero Two is their code call. Now we've based this very uh, loosely on the actual module that is going to be used this year when the Americans land on the moon. But because of the requirements of the story, we've had to enlarge it and give it an extra level of passenger deck, which uh, it'll be some time, I think, before the Americans start carrying passengers. The two basic principles in our story, one is that uh, this is a new frontier. So like all new frontiers, it has a Western flavor and a feel of adventure for the people involved in it. And we've tried to bring in a lot of parallels with a life in the West. And the second real basis is, I think, that even when you're surrounded by sophisticated machinery as we are here, that human nature changed very little. Mm -hmm. 